It's nine o'clock and the thirteenth day of May twenty thirteen in New York. Uh, daylight saving time and we are ready for our life application Bible class. From the Faith Baptist Church International Ministries, and we welcome everyone to share with us. And tonight, of course, we want to begin with prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you for all your tender mercies. We thank you for all those who have gathered near and far. And we thank you for the ability to broadcast from anywhere to any place and may your word uh, do what it intends to do tonight and let us apply your word to our lives and the lives of others tonight we actually continue our series it's going to be five parts uh effective prayer for such a time as this effective prayer for such a time as this. And uh, I want to begin with a segment called The Audacity of Prayer. The Audacity of Prayer. Too often denial is closely connected to our prayers. We simply don't believe totally that God is able able to do anything. A certain amount of denying the realities of some things, such as bad news, seem to help us to cope with life situations. However, the audacity of prayer begins with great presumptions and boldness on our part. Romans 11 and 6 Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For the person who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. Again, that's Romans 11, 6. So, this is what I have to say about this. I wonder what you have to say about it. Primarily, the above scripture invites us to be presumptuous about prayers to God. How else can we really know that God exists and that He answers prayer? Don't deny the existence of God. So when you go to God, you go boldly because you are positive that he exists and so you speak that way and you act that way don't pray in such a weak way as to make it seem that there is a presumption of doubt no there ought to be a presumption of god existence without any shadow of doubt and you must be audacious in your prayer this is the Faith Baptist Church International Ministries. I am Barrys Ford Adams. I'm the senior pastor of the Faith Baptist Church in Corum. We are broadcasting live on Roku, on the internet TV, through Facebook, Twitter, and the Faith Baptist Church webpage, faithbaptistchurch2.org and also on our telephone line and you can get information about on our telephone line on our web page so we're talking about the audacity of prayer tonight jesus told us this about prayer ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find Knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, 
and the personal six fines, and to the personal locks it shall be opened. Or what person is there of you whom, if your son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to them who ask him? Matthew 7, 7 through 11. We are talking about the audacity of prayer. Jesus said it right in Matthew 7, 7 through 11. This is what I think. I wonder what you think. God is not intimidated by the boldness of our prayers. God's aim is to grant us blessings according to his purpose for us. As long as our desires do not conflict with his. Amen. That's what Matthew the seventh chapter verses seven to eleven tells us ab among other things. We are talking about the audacity of prayer. Praying with conviction and with boldness. Amen. Uh, these excerpts I'm taking from a book whose title is Effective Prayers for Such a Time as This. And this is book one, written by myself and by the co-pastor, who is my wife, Gloria Elena Adams. Let us continue with one other thing at least. Um, I think that most people have bargained with God in prayer from time to time. I know I have. That is, we often pray with conditions. We call this bargaining with God. For example, when we say, God, if you will help me out of this mess, I will do this or that for you. This is bargaining with God. Bargaining with God is not a bad thing necessarily. Abraham bargained with God when he was maturing in faith. In Genesis, the 18th chapter, verses 16 through 33, he tried to get God to spare the lives of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Although Abraham bargained with God, his approach was very bold. So, this is what I think. What do you think? When we bargain with God, at least be clear and presumptuous about it. So, that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. I pray that you have received it, and I pray that it will be helpful to you in what you do as you apply it to your life and to the lives of others. God bless you. Have a great night. If you have any comments, you can email me or you can uh, post them, type them in, if you're on the internet, right in the comment, uh, the chat box, and I will get back to you right away. God bless you. God bless you, and have a great night. I want to stop the live broadcast but you can type any comments or suggestions uh, in the box.